Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the Queer Edge with Jackie Jet. And please, please, please don't fret or worry that you might be missing uh, a Desperate Housewives uh, on another channel or Anderson Katrina Cooper on CNN. Or perhaps don't be fearful that you're missing a rerun of uh, Touched by an Angel on another network. Stay where you are. Yes. And we will touch you like an angel in a most inappropriate way. You know, so many times in my career as a top investigative journalist, I have talked about the power of the penis. I am a bit of an expert in this field, and penis conventions around the world hire me as a keynote speaker for presentations I like to call Up with Penis. Yeah, men have been chosen above all spiritual be beings to bear the awesome responsibility of carrying a penis and a scrotum throughout our life. <laughs> Women are too weak in the lumbar region to carry such an amazingly complex, heavy appendage. Now, let it be known that I'm not saying women are pussies. Far from it. They just don't have the physical or mental capacity to carry around a love sausage, a man root, a poon tanger, if you will. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year after year after year. And also, I must add that grooming the scrotal and penal area takes time. Mirrors, love, and sometimes lube. Am I right? Now, but I should warn you of this. Doing shots of Cuervo, Jose Cuervo Gold, while manscaping is not recommended. This is a lesson I've learned over and over and over. This is my yeah. Then there are those in our male community that have been cheated in the penile area. Their cherry splitter will not split the cherry. Their 11th finger is a pinky or a nub. And these men are called Republicans. Yeah. So today, today, let's pay respect. Let's pay respect to the men who own and operate their very own ice cream machine. What are you doing right now? And let's thank them for sharing their sweetness with the world. Because if you really, really think about it, without them, we wouldn't be standing here talking about them today. Long live the penis. Yes, yes. Now, our guest star tonight does not have a penis. But if any woman could potentially have one, it would be her. She's cool, and ladies and gentlemen, she's a very funny lady, you know that. It's Sandra Bernhardt is with us. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, he likes very much. Now, Rob Williams is with us. He also has a penis, although it's rumored he could be Republican. He also has, though, some news from the edge with us. Also, John Roker is a filmmaker and a stud puppet who plays with his puppets. Marionettes, to be exact. Scary ones, too. And he's here to talk about his new movie. Dana Eagle, who's been with us before, she's hilarious, a comedian. She will have you pulling on your panties. What is that all about? We'll have to see. We also have the adored, our superstar rockers from L.A., and they're going to make us boogie-woogie-oogie till your ball sack can't boogie no more. Yeah, that's true. And who knows more about the boogie than Daddy Jack's personal go-go girls, the Barbarellas. So shout it out loud if it ain't broke. Break it! Thank you, because we Queer Edgers, we are a go. Yeah.
Hey, welcome to the Queer Edge. It's Tuesday, 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 and you all know what that means. It simply means that yesterday was Monday, tomorrow's Wednesday. So don't get confused in this whole scheme of what we call a week. You know, Sandra Bernhardt is here. Uh, she is friends with all the biggest stars, and now she's got a friend with the big penis. Please welcome uh, the tremendously funny Miss Sandra Bernhardt. Hey, honey. No, of course. I'm fashion. I'm fascinated. Fascinated. I'm fascinated. Because by that man's penis. Is it not the is most that, incredible thing that you've ever seen? It's one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Yeah. I've got to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, it's like one of the, I think it's the ninth wonder of the world. And the, <laughs> the rumors are, that was, that was someone who just took it. What would, that, <laughs> yeah, me. Ow! What would you estimate that penis? Uh, the I'm size? estimating around 11 up. Our cameraman knows for some how, odd how, reason. How long? The straight cameraman knows that it's nine. Nine uh, inches? Nine inches. I say, uh, yeah. That's nine inches? Yeah. If that's nine. I thought that was like 15. I, <laughs> I swooned. Yeah, we may have to have him on sometime uh, to talk about his penis monologue, uh, and uh, which reminds the me. Monologue? Uh, well, d d doesn't have to do much to talk. Uh, it just moves. Okay. Oh, it, it, yes. and it, it it's does also its own monologue. A dancer as well, by the way. Um, but Sandra. Yes, darling. I wanted to tell you something. You know, last week we were talking about the vagina monologue. Uh, and you were crying pathetically. Yes. Like a baby. That I'd never been chosen. That you had never been chosen yes, to yes. be part of the vagina, or as my mother calls it, the vagina monologues. <laughs> uh, but then I read over the weekend something that I think is going to make you happy. And that's why we're here on this network and on this show is to make Sandra Bernhard the happy woman. That's right. And it's Turn around and happy. look. Eve Ainsler, your friend, is in a... Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh! God, I, I, it gave me a start. <laughs> She is in a new I know, show. That's why I thought about her because I saw that friggin' ad for the Good Body. She's here in New in L.A. with it. She dragged it to the West Coast. Yes. This yes. woman is shameless. Look at her. Look at her. Ah! Uh -huh. oh, my <laughs> vagina will eat you alive. <laughs> the Good Body. <laughs> I, what in the friggin' hell? Look at her with that diamond. Don't try to soften the shit up with a diamond bracelet. Here's the cool thing. If you read the ad for it. It says, from the woman who brought you the vagina monologues, now brings you and shows you even more. So my question is this. It's the cervix. It's got to be either that, a fallopian tube, a uterus, <laughs> or is it the fucking pancreas? What she, is she, she showing us? She pulls out her, 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 her ovula yeah. through her vagina. She, I mean, what? I know, and how long is this going to go on? She gets the vagina monologue, and then she thing. just works her way up the body. Now, let me tell you, I did a, a round table for the New York Times. It was her, it was Sarica Jessica Parker. You know, uh -huh. I have to add this, Sarica. Yeah, uh-huh. And it was a couple of other people. And this one... It was like this whole thing about n nudity, being, being a woman in Hollywood and being, like, you know, exploited for nudity. And I was like, I took the stance, I don't ever feel exploited. If I decide to show my body, it's my choice, as it is with everyone. Right. Okay, you don't want to take the part, don't take the part. Stand tall. Right. So this one, we started talking about um, Showgirls, you know, the, the, right. the Vegas uh, film. And I said it was a cult hoot classic. Yes, it is. She said it was, it was terribly degradating to women. I said... Honey, get a sense of humor. Liven up your vagina and have a few laughs because it's funny shit. She was, she was taking on showgirls like it was like, you know, this really like important piece of so, art. Sociological yeah. commentary on how women are treated. Yeah, I think it was more about, I, I look at that film as more about the destruction of Elizabeth Berkeley's career. Well, the, uh, you know. Listen, you know what? If one if one has a shot, they're gonna go for yeah, it. Absolutely. You yeah. Know, I don't think it would have made any difference one way or the other. Whether she would have. Yeah, no. I think it was like she went for it. She went for broke, and I admire her. Oh my for God! That. Look what's going on now. Now we're inside Eve's vagina. And look at it. And look what's happening. It's causing static. It's causing <laughs> vaginal static. Static cling. <laughs> She's got.
got the John static cling. It's the worst thing in the world. They've got to come up with something that'll get rid of it. Fifteen electrical outlets. Uh, oh, thank you so much. We had asked Sandra last week because the queer edgers needed to know how many electrical outlets she had in her house. And like the good little Jewish girl she is, I she went through. home and studied. Through. Well, it was fun because I was home in New York for the weekend with my darling daughter, my gorgeous girlfriend, who I'm sure is watching right now, because we subscribe to Q in New York now. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much. We called up, and we got Q, and it is fun, 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 24-7. And there my girlfriend go. was just, like, in shock. She didn't know what hit her. She said, is that you laughing in the background? I said, hey, of course. A photo of your girlfriend sometime. Oh, yeah. Well, she'll she, come down to the show. She's a woman. I bet she, she is. She's a formidable lady. Uh, that's what I thought. I hope, I hope to tell you, brilliant. Yeah. A brilliant writer and Honestly, a lovely... Honestly, foxier than me? Foxy in a different way. Yeah, okay. Oh. That's acceptable. Very Foxy good. Foxy without, without a penis. Very good answer. Let's go to Rob Williams, who, by the way, uh, has a penis. Uh, there's not much of it there. Uh, so he won't be talking about it. So let's welcome News from the Edge with Rob Williams. Hello and welcome to the news. The author of the memoir, A Million Little Pieces, James Frey, continues to make headlines with his admission that significant amounts of his tale of addiction and recovery were fabricated. During an appearance by James on Larry King Live, Oprah called in to show support. And speaking just for myself, whatever Oprah says, goes. And if Oprah says lying about things is cool, then it is coolie Oh, girlfriend. I lied to my mother last night. Her Christmas card didn't get lost. It got forgotten. I lied to Jack Jett over the weekend. He called and I told him I was just riding my ass off, but I was really making homemade chili and drinking a vodka tonic. <laughs> 20% of the news tonight is going to be bald-faced lies, and I hope you people are buying every word of it. <laughs> a Florida woman was arrested for putting drops of Visine in a co-worker's coffee. The popular eye drop causes severe diarrhea when ingested. <laughs> well, who knew it would be so easy to get back at that punk who stole my zip drive? Riken, you want to dance with me? You want to dance, pretty boy? Let's dance. <laughs> Osama bin Laden released a tape this last week that was a strange mixture of threat and conciliation. It was the exact combination Karl Rove used in a recent speech. I'm not saying Karl Rove actually is Osama bin Laden. They just have the same speechwriter. <laughs> in an effort to beautify the city of Miami, they are replacing the palm trees with live oak trees. Another beautification project involves convincing swimmers to choose old-fashioned swimsuits instead of banana hammocks. Banana hammocks. I guess, it, I guess you had to see it. The transit strike in New York City might resume after a contract was rejected by the union. The strike halts all bus and subway lines, and so taxi drivers celebrated as this gives them many more opportunities a day to not stop for a black man. Here with a commentary is a New York City taxi driver, Travis Bickle. Mr. Bickle? You talking to me? Yes, sir. You talking to me? Yep. Yeah, because I don't see anyone else here, so you, you must be talking to me. I am talking to you. Yeah? Yes. Really? Because that's cool. I mean, a lot of people don't talk to me because, you know, the Mohawk and all. But wow, if you're really talking to me, that's great. I'm super lonely. We can talk about anything you want to talk about. We don't have to talk about me. Some people only talk about themselves or just wait for you to finish talking so they can get their turn. But I'm a great listener. And it's, man, it's just so cool to talk to someone who really cares. And it's, and it, you know, it's not all fake and horrible and shallow and rude. You know how people can be rude for no reason? You just want to put a gun to their head and say, want to be rude now? Well, I'll go on, say it again. Say it one more time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Travis Bickle, everyone. Where are you going? I'm Rob Williams. This ain't over, Robbie. This is very far from over. And that's the edge of the news. We'll be right back with more from Jack and Sandra on The Queer Edge.
Hi! If we only had one minute left to talk, what would we talk about? Cool. <laughs> Let's assume that we did. That we only had one minute left in our life to talk about. Here's what I'd like to talk about. I would want to know if you have ever considered naming all 15 of your electrical outlets. Well, some of them have been named. Some of them have been named. Astrasia, uh -huh. Susan, oh. Leisha, Leisha, uh -huh. Tyrone. Uh huh. See, Tyrone yeah. responded. Yeah. By buzzing. Okay, I just can we before we go. To you have a fan up your fanny right now. You're, uh -huh. It's very Marilyn Monroe. You see, you are sexier than ever. <laughs> Listen, here's the great thing. Throughout the night, what we're doing, uh, you'll be seeing behind uh, Sandra. We're going to be constantly running this. Uh, camera that's going up uh, uh, Eve Insler's vagina. That's right. And in the deep, dark recesses. In the deep, dark recesses of... Uh, and is this, am I correct, is this the same vagina that gave birth to Eric McCormick? Isn't she the mother of Will, of Will and Grace? Um, stepmother, I believe. Okay, so... so it, stepmother. doesn't really count. So it doesn't really count. So he was never in this vagina no, area. No, 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 no. no he no, rejected no. it. Okay, and I think what's happening here is, uh, I, I, and she'll probably be doing a show about this sometime a called. Sonogram. Uh, okay. This is Eve Insler's fecal matter, <laughs> uh, and that's going to be the show. That's going to be the one to go see. That's right. <laughs> that, talk about going all the way. Q Television traveled to the annual Sundance Independent Film Festival in Utah this past week. There were celebrities. Big parties and tons of premieres. Here's our first report. You're so bitchin'. Paris comes here to party. And some other pretty faces who actually have acting careers head to Sundance for their films. So, like Jennifer Aniston, star of the opening night premiere, Friends I with Money. A look at four females on L.A.'s That's West Side. You can stand right here where you were standing before. If you need any more proof Sundance has expanded to the point of bursting, take a look at the pen of reporters and photographers braving the freezing cold for two and a half hours for a quick five-second shot of Jennifer and her co-star. Come in. The hot premiere Friday, Kinky Boots, a terrific film from England by the makers of Calendar Girls. It's a true story about a family-run shoe factory reborn by making sturdy-heeled boots for big dudes in drag. She would tell a Joe for and Joel Edgerton salute Sundance for its support of LGBT films. It's just a great forum for the sorts of films that may not fit into a mainstream kind of environment to sort of get a screening and to get out there. We'll have more on Kinky Boots later during the festival. Now, some other films we're checking out for you for giving the Franklins a look at sexual repression and bigotry in the Bible-thumping South. And from the Philippines, the blossoming of Maximo Oliveira, about a young outlaw who falls in love with a cop. You know what's weird, man? Lots of LGBT short films. One already getting noticed, Bug Crush, about infatuation in a small-town high school. In the documentary category, the film with the longest title, Beyond Beats and Rhymes, a hip-hop head weighs in on manhood in hip-hop culture. It includes a frank look at homophobia. Another documentary making headlines didn't get into Sundance, but they came anyway. Fashion guru and Nylon Magazine's Marvin Scott Jarrett with his look at Japan through the eyes of musicians from Good Charlotte. When you land in Tokyo, it's like New York on steroids. It's just like... Blade Runner in real life, and it's the coolest experience that anyone could have. Their party was. Oh, oh, oh. It's a Japanese theme, it's back. Sundance, Sundance, Sundance. Someday we'll go to Sundance. Yeah, we should go to Sundance someday. Because with our film that we're going to base we're on the show. Exactly, with Colleen Camp. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you this? You know how. They do those two camera shots like the guy was interviewing. Yes. And they do the over camera right, shots. Right, like right. I've always wanted to do that. And so can, I want to kind of audition with you right okay. now. Okay. So this is like an over shot. I've just asked you uh, how fabulous is your show and you say. Right. The show is unbelievable. It's so exciting and really glamorous. <laughs> Do you know what well, maybe I, I should look in the camera and do it. Now, say it again. Oh, the show is fantastic, Jackie. It's amazing, entertaining, and super glamorous. <laughs> That's oh. great, Sandra. And what is your next film going to be? Well, it's going to be about my adventures in skiing and lovemaking. 
That's Snow fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was great. Do very... you think I can get a job on E.T.? I think they're going to come around to you soon. Uh, look out, you bitch, Mary Hart, because I'm on my way for you. <laughs> Oh, look, we are deep within the, almost to the pancreas of Eve Insler right now. How exciting is that? And if that's not exciting enough, John Roker is a punk rocker and a filmmaker with a brand new puppet movie about the Manson family starring Green Day's Billy Joe. Queer Edgers, please meet Mr. John Roker. Yeah! Oh, we're in L.A., we hug. Of course we do. Hey, sweetie. So, Johnny, 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 go sit down over there next to next Sandra to Bernhardt. Sit next to me, kitten. Please Princess. don't get too near her. Her celebrity space begins here. Oh, I right. see you guys. Her Thank celebrity you, vacuum. Thank thing. you, uh, And so you'll know where your boundaries are. Now, John. Yes, sir. You, my friend, mm. are pervert. Uh, a puppet perv. Uh, you, my friend, are a sick and twisted man, correct? Go on. I love these compliments. Yeah. It's great. Uh, but a brilliant one, right? A brilliant pervert. Yeah, a brilliant pervert. I'm listening. Now, you, uh, you like, have been around since the punk days with the Go-Go's. Did you uh, guys know Ramones. each other from the Go-Go's? No, I don't think so. So I'm beginning to wonder if that doesn't sound a bit suspicious. Hmm. <clears throat> well, tell us about this film. I call him a giant come lately, do you think? No, apparently he's very good friends with Belinda, and I knew Belinda, not in the day, in more of the... You know, but you the, the solo, Belinda. But you performed in the L.A. clubs during the punk scene, though. Yes, I did. Yeah, you are part of the scene. Yes, was I was like, part of the scene. We saw Paul Rubin uh, does Pee Wee thing at Roxy, and we yes. would see Sandra play, and she was, it was all part. It was comedians, mm -hmm. it yeah. was art, it was yeah. music, it was poetry, it was magazines, it was film. And I you were part of that, That's lady. right. I, I really you know, miss I those days. They used to have stamp comedians open up for punk rock bands. Like the yeah. Kipper Kids yeah. opened she up. She just finished opening up for uh, Cindy Lauper. So it's just still going on, only on a larger it's scale. It's different, though. It is. It's it different. was more of a community. Yeah. yeah. You know. By the way, you know the Go-Go's are getting ready to do a 25th anniversary to Beauty and the Bee at the Hollywood Bowl. At the Hollywood Bowl. <gasps> yeah. Isn't that going to be a, That's going to be a fun time. In the summer. Sense. Yeah. Of course it's going to be in the summer. Yeah. 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 When you have L.A. rocks. Now, can we show Live Freaky, Die Freaky as a film that John felt compelled to make, along with Satan, uh, that is about the Manson family. And obviously, you couldn't afford to hire actors. So you... Uh, <laughs> I used my friends, of course. You used your friends right. who are all puppets. Uh, well, only or, when I'm around, they're my puppets. Yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah, but they're not real puppets. So we're going to look at the first clip. And the first clip is... Basically, the movie trailer. Am I right? Am I right? Are you right? Am I yeah, right? Yeah, do it. Let's take a look at it right now. I have heard your distress call, and I'm here to save you. Come to me. Charlie? Skelter's coming down on you and your children. <laughs> I have no mercy for you. Charlie? Now, I'm confused. When you yeah. say... Asia Argenta as one of the characters. Is she the voiceover? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. She's That's our checking. only actress that we just, had. Because you just said she's hot, and I was like, she is hot. She is amazing. And we you were, were thinking the puppets not. Oh, hot. the puppets are way hot. Are you yeah. yeah, I, I think. I mean, from what I saw, it seems unbelievably Sexy. hot. Yeah. How long did it take you to make this movie? Two years. Okay. Two years. Is it a big budget movie? No. Okay. We paid more money on insurance to insure this film when it came out than that, the actual budget. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know what? Speaking of selling we're gonna uh -huh. sell we have to sell some of our beautiful you are so on top of this commercial thing public that's, access that's what ads. makes you the star that's what makes you the star uh you're gonna stick around yeah, man yeah yeah and uh we'll be right back with literally about eight pounds of queer edge stuff after this commercial break so please please stay tuned <laughs>
Let's let uh, no, no let's, let's let Sandra. She's really this cute girl. Great. Whenever we're ready, yeah. How much time do we have now? Hey guys, welcome back to The Queer Edge. We're sitting here talking with John Roker uh, about this film, Die, Freaky, Die, Freaky, Freaky, Die, Freaky. Mm -hmm. Something live, along those live lines. Live Freaky? Die, die freaky. freaky. Yeah. Now, tell us some of the... So, how did you get Billy Joe from Green Day involved in all this? Because I love that man. Yes. He's that man very talented. Yes. Very and talented. so are you buddies with him? Mm -hmm. Oh, can I touch you? Go ahead. Oh. In my toilet part. Yeah, right here. I want to touch you. Where is? I want to touch you in whatever what part that Billy Joe is in. Oh, totally. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, we were we're we're really good friends. A toilet part. Your tuchus? Yeah. No, the thing. The penis. Yeah. We were talking about earlier. The thing. Oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, the fourteen-inch thing that shocked you. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't shock me. It delighted me. Really? It did not. Did nothing for my region there. Um. I mean. Yeah. See. Isn't it interesting that how a large penis can just take over an entire show? A large penis can just, like, make the party happen. It can. It just can. Have and you ever and had trust a... me, tonight around midnight as I go to sleep, it will still be in my mind. Have you I ever know had, it will. Have you ever had a baby penis before? Uh, no. Never. No. Never, ever? You know, like penis? when Ben was someone with a very small penis, oh. like really, really small. Okay, we just can't talk about just the baby. We can't talk about baby penises. <laughs> we have no time for baby penis talk because right, we've got to see heroin-induced or a cocaine-induced puppets. Vitamins are vitamins. Right. Okay. Right now, cocaine-induced puppets. This powder is super duper speedy, delicious. It's snow with a punch, and it's yummy, yummy in this girl's tummy. My baby will be kicking for days on this shit. Mama loves her vitamins. Bless you, Sharon. I would have said God bless you, but who am I kidding? Fucking great quality. Hey, Abigail, could you please not smoke? I'm a child. God, you can be so insensitive at times. I'm so sorry, Sharon. What was I thinking? I'm always so fabulous, but sometimes I can be such a twat. That's okay, sweetie. Hey, does anyone have a joint? You're such an inspiration to us all. So fucking unselfish. So not a fucking cunt like all the rest. I know, I know. It's exhausting. I have to snort for two now. God, I love this woman. If only you had a thick, meaty cock between your legs instead of that hatchet wound, I would marry you in a second. And speaking of You are so <laughs> getting us thrown off the air. Uh, so getting us thrown off. I just want uh, 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 FCC, I had nothing to do with that. I'll take full responsibility. Uh, he takes full responsibility. As you know, <laughs> I worship the Lord yeah. on a daily basis. Uh, sure. <laughs> and Sandra's a strong believer in the Kabbalah faith. So we do not advocate uh, the words like those used 
horrible, that horrible film. language. Yeah. So, so we're going to have to cut to our next guest. I'm yeah, sorry. Our you. next guest has, has us all rolling on the floor. Rolling, rolling. The last time she was here, so we brought her back. Yay! Yay! We're smart like that. Please welcome comedian and star of her own one-woman show, Ms. Dana Eagle. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be back. I feel so, so alive. And, you know, it's so weird because before I came to L.A., everybody said to me, Dana, L.A. is a town driven by image and appearance. And I was like, oh, well then, that is the place for me. <laughs> You know, but I'll be honest with you guys, I don't want to be famous. I don't. I think it would be kind of scary. People invite you to parties, and then they tell you how talented you are, and then you go to the internet and you put in my name, Dana Eagle, and it comes up, Dana Eagle, live, nude, pictures. Yeah. Okay, that's not the joke. And then my mom would have to join up with Alyssa Milano's mom telling everybody, those body parts are not real. And I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> I look fabulous. <laughs> so uh, I'm, um, I'm just for those of you who didn't see me last time. I'm, uh, I'm not a typical black comedian. Um, I'm Jewish. Uh, do we have any Jews here at QTV? Oh, we got a lot. Oh, look at them all with their coupons. Um, people, uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but growing up Jewish, we're always told that we're the chosen people. That's what our parents tell us to tell us we're the chosen people. But then we get to gym class, and we find out not so much. <laughs> not for kickball, we're not. I have to tell people that, because I always expect people to know, like, a little more about my culture than they actually do. Like, I work in an office during the day. I work as a secretary. I'm not a very good secretary. Like, I don't have enough beanie babies to cover the entire length of my desk. <laughs> but this woman comes up to me at work, and she goes, Hey, Dana, happy Thanksgiving. Oh. <sighs> Oh, I'm sorry. You're Jewish. It's like, that's ridiculous. I'm American. I celebrate Thanksgiving. I told her, I said, we celebrate Thanksgiving. We have turkey, we have apple pie, and we sacrifice a Christian. Would you like to come on over? Oh. They go great with cranberry. We have to celebrate every holiday we could, because our holidays suck. Last year for Hanukkah, my dad got me dating for dummies. Yeah, so this year I got him gift buying for assholes. <laughs> he already owned it. So, uh, what else? Yeah, you know, I make fun of my family a lot. I do, but they're really great. I actually, I just got the chance to see them all recently. They were all there. My favorite uncle was there, you know, the one that uh, touched me in all the right places. Um, because the other one just fumbled around. He, like, couldn't find my zipper or anything, and it really just, it just killed the moment. So, uh... I don't know uh, what else. I guess I just wanted to address award season because I like the award season. Except like a few years ago, Nicole Kidman she won a she won an award and then she thanked the producers for taking a chance on her. Yeah, because she's so on the fringe, you know. But then she gave a really nice uh, she gave a really nice speech to her to her mother and her daughter and it, it really touched me and it made me think about what it is I'd say to my family if I ever received such an award I think I'd just be like and to my family I'd like to say is this enough is this enough are you happy now are you happy maybe we could let law school go my name's Dana Eagle thank you very much thank you come here honey come here Fantastic. Thank you. You know Sandy Bernard? Yes. I saw you practicing out in the hallway. Yeah. Which I loved. Did it yes. show that I... Hi. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back, Sandy. Show you practice? Yeah, sweetie. Thank you. You're funny. We like you. Yeah, we you like do? You. Yeah. We All right, gotta, cool. We're going to have to cut you a break, but real quick, there is some commercial that you're in that you're, yeah. like, famous now for. I know. And you must be making Everywhere millions of dollars. What is I'm it? I'm not. It's, uh, it's Mako. So it's Robinson May here. It's Strawbridge in New Jersey, where my dad lives. It's Filene's in Boston. But Just do whatever you, you do so we might recognize you. What is it that you do in it? Oh, what do I, you want me to really uh, do it? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, I go, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. And then I hop on his lap. <laughs> and I, sorry, you're right there. He asked me to do it. That is more shocking than the penis. Sorry. <laughs> That's why we're here, Sandra, I, to shock you with you, penis and jump laps. You give me a command and I do it. Yep. 
That's yeah. Awesome. That was great. Okay, Thank we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to come back, and we're going to try to shop. Oh, my God, look how far up E. Vinsler we are. Getting further and further. So you don't, you want to stay tuned for that, because we may at the end be coming out of her mouth. And that would be exciting. What else can I say? Hey, stay tuned. We'll be right back after uh, this. We are back. And we are. And we are here with Dana Eagle. Who's yes. She's wonderful cool. and brilliant. Thank and you. Fresh That's and original. so sweet. I think you're brilliant. I saw you on Broadway. And oh, then when I saw you out there in the waiting room, I was like, oh my God. I know. I it, was, can't. it was a magical moment to see you like practicing and walking around doing your thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it, yeah. Well, I, I respect it. You well, were focused you. and you were into your moment. Thank you. Oh, you very just said much. you got attacked in um, Santa Monica I did. last week. I was attacked. Um, I was attacked by a schizophrenic lady in Santa Monica. She just like came up behind me and started beating me up with an umbrella. And stealing your material. And stealing my Are you material. Sure that wasn't Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is about in Santa Monica in Los Angeles, you can't tell the homeless people from the regular people. Yeah, so they are good looking. Because everybody's she, eccentric. She right. was dressed nicer than me. And, you know, and so then she was, and then, like, at one point she was standing over me and she was like, do you want more? Do you want more? And it was so, I didn't, it, there was no context. It's not like somebody was asking me for my wallet. So, like, I knew I didn't want more, but I didn't know what the right answer to the question was. Right. Because. She was sort of a giver. Do you want more? That's a yeah, giver. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And then she just beat me up and then she went and sat down and she took a rest. Like, literally yeah. just a few feet. And then found it her next, uh. Victim. Yeah. Well, I called the police. They showed up. They came on their bicycles and, you know. And, and said, get away, sad. get away, get away, little girl. Yeah. They just, like, yeah. They what are you know. doing next? Were you in the road? I'm going to be or? in Orlando opening up for Craig I'm Shoemaker sorry this week. Uh, Is it, yeah, well, my mom's going to be visiting. Is it going to be bad? You know? oh, Orlando is something. one of the yeah. horrific Shoemaker, places. I used to go see his shows. He sometimes tended to be a bit homophobic. Has he backed off of that a bit or not? You know, it's funny. He has this one chunk that uh -huh. his managers have asked him to move. It happens to be 45 minutes long. And, some, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes it's there, and sometimes he pulls it out. And he always kind of struggles with it. And um, I think he feels because he's personally very loving and so many of his friends are gay, you know, uh -huh. he feels okay about it, but then the reaction he we gets know, is this would be a nice opportunity in Orlando to bond with him and try to talk him down off the ledge. Yeah, because, okay. you we, know, we, have to, we, we, got, we homos have a sense of humor, but I've heard his, and it's really borders on uh, uh, pathetic. pathetic. Thank you. Our musical guests today are superstars in their native L.A., now they are taking their rock revolution to the South by Southwest Music Ooh, Fest in Austin. It's so hip. Yep. Give it up for the adults. Yes,
the sun hey, hey. We're so electric till it's gone hey, hey. Living so detrimental To the lives that live for no one We're so electric till it's gone hey, hey. We're so electric till it's fucking hey. Look around, the soul town So much debaucheries going on City streets on ordinary Got the kids take what's the story And they lie, 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 Positively posh chemistry Mr. Singer, Mr. Rock Singer, come over a minute and you be the spokesperson for those okay. lovely men. I love the drummer. Oh, really? They're my favorite. Are they your favorite right homosexual now. band? That's Better so than Bronski Beat. Here you go, baby. Here you yeah. go. Talk, talk to us. Talk to the mic. Tell us. Talk to us. Talk to now, the Now, listen, you guys are going to South by Southwest, mm -hmm. right, in Austin. Yes, we are. Uh, do you do you know how super cool that that makes you? Yes, because yeah. we did it last year as well. Oh, so you know. <laughs> so now you're the coolest. even more super cool, right? Uh huh. Exactly. Okay. Uh, are you? Are you? Are, have you guys got a big head over it? No, no, no. I'm just coming off like well, that. Well, it's kind of hard to think that you don't because you've named yourself the adored. Uh -huh. It's like me naming myself the blessed. Don't you? You know. Exactly. But you are. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sandra. You don't need to even mention it. Uh, that is true. I don't even know. <laughs> it's a cocky name, but, you know. Okay. It works. So, yeah, so you right, guys right? have a CD coming out? Yes, we do. We have a full length coming out in, um, I think, uh, probably early summer. We just finished the EP. Um, we did a couple songs with uh, Pete Shelley from the Buzzcocks. I love Pete Shelley. Right? One and, of the first open so queers in punk rock. That you bite your nails and you don't have a time for a nice manicure. Yeah. Hey. Listen I to Miss Bernhard. Let me see yours. Just done, but no polish, <laughs> Come honey. On. Come on. Honey, these are gorgeous. Don't talk shit on mine. Look at this. No, yeah. don't talk. Don't talk. Don't. <laughs> hey, let's get into a honey, bitch fight. Michael, <laughs> Michael <laughs> at Bloomy Nail on 8th Avenue, honey. All right, all right. Turns the shit out just because I'm not all wearing right. polish and some tired old formaldehyde eating crap. <laughs> <laughs> they're smooth and the cuticles are perfection. Okay, now I'm not listen. wagging your ass. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're listen, a, you're a friend John there. Walker, here's my yeah. question. John, do you think you could ever use them as voices in one of your films? And somebody sell a 10 million records, then I'll think about it. Yeah. yeah. Like good show. Yeah, suddenly they'll become uh, like. Yeah. Right. Because I want to talk uh, about. Out of reach you, you did a documentary for Green Day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was moonlighting during, during Live Freaky and uh, in the studio with How did you get the gig doing the, the thing for Green Day? Knee burns. Um, I'm friends with them, and Billy didn't trust anyone else to be in the studio with anyone mm -hmm. else except for now, me. Now, are any of those Green Day boys homos? Homos, meaning uh, meaning uh, gay, oh, uh, uh, penis suckers. Uh, how, I don't know how else I can describe it. Yeah, no, they're no, not. No, no. Well, that's cool because they're still groovy. Oh, they you are. Know, they're they're naked. In my movie, in my movie, they're though. naked. Yeah. yeah. I are got they the really? Oh, yeah. yeah the oh, well, then I have to get it for that. Yeah. I'm a homo supremacist. I think really, you know, gay people for the most part do things better than breeders. That's just the way it usually goes. Uh, so. But they do a pretty good job for a bunch of breeders. I just got to oh, say yeah. that. Oh, yeah. They definitely breed. That, uh, yeah. They definitely breed, mm -hmm. and they definitely put out some good music. And, and will you come back and visit us when we can see Yeah, when it's so all done, I'll bring, I'll bring Billy with me. Would you? Yeah, I'll send my lap. Hey, I, here's what I got to tell you. A little if you bring Billy, Billy Armstrong, mm -hmm. is that his name? Billy for, Joe. Billy Joe. Yes. From, uh, Green, from Day. Green Day to this studio. and if Then I will bring Julianne Moore. Uh, bring Julian. She said she would come on. Okay, and if yeah, you get I, I went over like a lead. Oh, did you see that new movie she did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, yeah. Julianne Moore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Uh, but she was in that new movie, the Ohio movie. Did you see that? Which one? The one she's Ohio. She's a housewife and tries to get rid of the uh, relationship. 
and she does jingles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here's my here's my here's my, here's my offer to yeah. you right off the bat. Yes, sir. You get Green Day, any member of Green Day, you get the whole group on here. It's two hundred dollars in your pocket. Well, I'm a pimp. Wow. Yeah. You get Billy himself a hundred bucks in your pocket. Hmm. You can't beat that, honey. You get, we're talking a hundred bucks now. How about Cherie Curry and <gasps> Oh I love Cherie Curry? I was totally joking. I was gonna get <laughs> No, we <laughs> love Cherry. Okay, we'll get Cherie. Yes. Yeah, get us all the runaways and yes. that's three hundred dollars. I have a question. Pocket. If the runaways got back together again, yeah. okay. where do you think they play? Where the Roxy. Play? Yeah, is that small? Yeah, That's sad. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got us. Uh, your band's. Uh, your band's gonna take us out. Get so get your skinny little rock ass up. All right, all right. Oh, they're going to England. Over. They're going to England to play with the Buzzcocks. And we'll be back. <laughs> hey, yeah, you next time. Here we go. We'll be right back. your history. Oh. Oh. oh my God, what a mind blowing experience. This entire evening has been, sort of. Uh, it's just really, have blown, it's blown me somewhat away. But uh, again, we have to stress time and time again, Sandra and I are out to create intergalactic peace. And, and, and I've got to say that we're doing a good job. There are three planets now uh, in our solar system that are without war. Pluto, Pluto, Mars, Mars and, and that's a big accomplishment because and of Mars is Uranus. Yeah, Uranus. We never went for that. No, yeah. we, war is always imminent on Uranus. Yeah, but but we've got it stopped right now. Yeah, that's. But you know what? The reason there's peace on those planets now is because of us. Oh. Yeah. Because of our mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't want to pat ourselves on the back too much, but yeah. And us. because of our. Intense yeah. respect and yeah. deep admiration for Eve Ensler. Yeah. Which and tonight only... has really taken us to new levels. Exactly. And also what helps with that is I have scored some amazing bud that you would not <laughs> believe. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, but this show is more about just being wacky and queer and queer edgy. This show is a learning experience. It is no child left behind. It is no drug left behind. And this is the point where we ask, each of you, our guests, what have you learned tonight? What is the one thing you're taking away from this show? What are you going to be blogging when you get home? Because I'm looking in your eyes and I see every single one of you are bloggers deluxe. Yeah, so let's start with you, Jean. Mm -hmm. What is the one thing that you've learned from watching, for being on The Queer Edge tonight? That your mother pronounces vagina? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good thing. Because I do it too. Okay. And Dana, what have you learned, honey? Um, I learned you don't need an invitation to jump in Sandra Bernard's lap. Uh, yes. No. You could just do it. You just do it. And you she's just, cool with and it. And if the opportunity strikes, if yeah. it's there, you got to just take it. And now you can start rumors that you're her lover. Okay. What have you learned? I learned that nine inches of cock looks a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah. What have I you learned? have learned that I don't have to leave your set to be on the edge of the punk movement. No, you're right there. Oh. There we are. <laughs> Ladies and Should gentlemen, good like night. It. Come back and see uh, us tomorrow night because Sandra's going to be here and we're going to have literally 16 tons of queer and stuff. Tomorrow night. Thank you all.